there's a brief moment while you are running fast that you are you know, getting more flight time than you are ground contact time. And that little moment of being in the air, it's only for a brief second, but it feels fantastic. Next up, Jack Darcy. She would go into this race as the clear favourite. wide banking corner and I've hit in this corner so many times. It's... As I come up to the apex of the corner I'm thinking if I don't change my line. I rip my helmet off. I go to stand up. I try to get up on all fours and my legs just splay right out to the side. My left femur is out the front of my skin. My right foot is facing the wrong way. I just had this feeling of wanting to get up and move, but I couldn't. I've never seen my dad cry. My dad was a mess because he was an avid motorbike rider and my mum was the strong one saying it'll be okay. Um, I told the anaesthetist that I wanted the surgeon to leave my ankle because I still wanted to sprint again. I didn't want that to be operated on. She said I'll be sure to let him know. Post surgery. I was just trying to move my big toes and my feet, just to try and move my ankles. I remember the most painful moment of my life so far, worse than the accident, you know, just trying to stand up. I could just felt this rush of just sharp pains just going through both of my legs, trying to hold my body weight up. I stood up and I walked three metres. And that was, that was a really proud moment. It was a moment of, I'm gonna keep trying. Every day I'm gonna keep doing something, even a little bit, just get a little bit better each and every day. lucky to have people around me, people who give you bursts of, you know, motivation. But, you know, getting to the end goal or where you want to be, you have to be the main driver of yourself and knowing that you can be is the most important thing. You know, it's up to me to make, you know, this the biggest, you know, comeback I can. You know, I decided to coach because I couldn't run. I love being around the track and, you know, coaching people, but at the same time, I feel, you know, lonely because I can't do that with them. I can still think it, I can still switch on, you know, my muscles that can do it, but, you know, I can't, I can't physically do it. It said in the reports, return to competitive sprinting is highly unlikely. That was, that was my lowest moment because I thought, you know, I'd been told by someone and it was written down, hard copy, that it wasn't going to happen. I think after I let the emotions flow and sort of let it overwhelm me, I turned the thoughts into, you know, well, it's here now. I'm gonna write down that I can do it. And then this is going to happen. Because if you choose to, you know, if you choose to stay in the dark spot, you'll stay there. If it's a cloudy day, you know, look for the sun, don't look for the clouds. Point, how 
can bring myself out of it is, you know, I try and recall the smell of the track. You know, after the sun's been beating down on the on the athletics track after a hot day, it's like the smell of rubber with, you know, mixed with sweat and heat that comes off. And like, it, it, if you can imagine that hitting, you know, coming in through your nostrils and then going through your lungs, you know, that's that's a sense that can switch you on in a sense. And that reminds me of being at the track and then, you know, being in a good place where I'm, you know, almost ready to race or, you know, thinking that I'm on the starting blocks before a race. You know, the start is called on your marks and you're just crouching, feet in blocks, body ready, muscles switched on, ready to explode. 